Glass that makes a bullet shatter? Yes, this is real and it's called a Prince Rupert's Drop, but despite its perceived strength, it's actually weaker than Kansas City's run defense if you find its Achilles heel. That weak point is at its tail and makes the entire thing explode. So how on earth is the glass so tough and weak at the same time? Well, part of the mystery relates to this uncooked noodle. This is not your average noodle. It's a whole week. Just kidding, it is average, but it's still important. It shows how materials have different strengths depending on if they're being compressed or stretched. It's decently hard to pull the pasta apart with your hands, but it easily snaps under compression. This clip actually shows more bending than compression, but it was too nice of a slow-mo to leave out. Anyway, concrete slash cement is the opposite. It can withstand 10 times more force in compression than in tension. That's why it's often used in buildings and bridges to support large compressive weights, but also why engineers have had to learn techniques to improve its tensile strength in order to avoid catastrophic cracking and failure. Glass is just like concrete, but has an even more extreme difference. Glass's compressive strength is 210 times more than its tensile strength. Although notice how that doesn't mean it's stronger than concrete, we're just comparing it to itself. Now this is great and all, but how does it relate to Prince Rupert's drop? Don't worry, we're almost there. Why should you never store liquid gallium in a glass container? Well, as the gallium cools to room temperature, it freezes and expands, pushing liquid up and out of the container. Now that elevated liquid is exposed to the air, so it freezes over and creates an enclosed container with liquid gallium still left on the inside. As that inner gallium freezes, it tries to expand but can't, so instead pressure builds up until the glass breaks and you're left with a mess. Water also expands as it freezes, which is actually super clutch though, because otherwise ice wouldn't float and all the fish would get frozen each winter. But anyway, water and gallium are the weird, unintuitive exceptions, not the rule. Glass, however, is like most liquids in that it shrinks when it becomes a solid. When you first drop the molten glass in water, the outer shell freezes almost immediately, making an enclosed rigid container. As the inner liquid glass continues to freeze, it still wants to shrink, but now needs to pull the outer rigid shell with it. By the time the entire drop has frozen, the outside of the drop experiences a massive compressive stress, estimated to be between 90 to 170 megapascals or 13,000 to 25,000 psi. The inner glass experiences that force equal and opposite, meaning it's the middle part that's in tension, and the tensile stress is important for the explosion part, but for now let's focus on how that outer compressive stress makes it strong enough to shatter a bullet. The predominant mechanism for failure in brittle materials like glass is brittle fracture, which starts with the formation of a crack. The compressive stress helps keep the glass resilient because it opposes the start and spread of the crack. That means to get a crack into the explosive tension region, you'd need a larger impact than the massive compressive force we already discussed earlier. Small bullets can't do that on the large part of the drop, but a lot of things can do that near the tail, where the skinniness of the glass makes it easier to bend and shear. Once that compressive surface is broken, the overall balance between compressive and tensile forces is broken and a chain reaction occurs, releasing all the stored energy in a beautiful explosion. 